So the globalists are laying the groundwork for pandemic 2.0. Get ready for lockdowns, school closures, forced vaccines. The CDC has been dropping hints for the past couple of weeks that a new massive outbreak of a highly infectious disease is coming out of Africa. Earlier this summer, the CDC added surveillance teams in Africa. Why would they do that? CDC going to Africa, uh, warning that it's just a matter of time before other parts of the world see this outbreak. Pandemic 2.0 is getting ready for a rollout, so better pay attention. We've been warning about this since the spring of this year, uh, that they would try to roll out some new mass lockdown, forced vaccine plan. Uh, but what, what you know, the, I guess the question was, what virus would it be? Mm -hmm. You know, would it be bird flu? Would it be COVID? What would it exactly be? But no, over the past 24 hours, it's looking increasingly likely that the next pandemic is monkeypox. So the CDC overnight warning a mass breakout of monkey monkeypox has hit Africa and many cases across the United States. The CDC is warning that it's already showing up double the rate that we've seen last year all across the United States. The CDC is issuing a new warning about a nationwide spike in mpox cases. New data shows the number of reported infections is almost double what they were at this time last year. Mpox, what used to be called monkeypox, that's a disease uh, that is rarely fatal. Its symptoms are similar to smallpox, but milder. ABC News medical course. But milder, I love that. But milder and quick, quick get away from that. It's mm -hmm. just really mild. So let's get everyone scared about it. Right. For but now. Quick, everybody panic, everybody panic, kinda. Yeah. It's, wait a minute, it's really mild. Okay. And you can only get it from uh, like promiscuous sex, I guess. Uh, I mean, I don't know exactly. No. And they're trying to say that, no, now there's a new deadly strain of monkey pox. So now there's a new, it, it used to be mild. Now it's deadly. Like what? Okay. What's going on here? How, how Clayton do these viruses mutate? Uh, gain of function. Sometimes that could be the case. Yeah. The only, again, these are pertinent questions. Let's ask them while we're allowed. Go, going back to Dr. Peter McCullough on our show about a year ago, talking about bird flu and mm -hmm. a paper that he then published at the same time talking about how, you know, bird flu, we, we've had it around for 100 years or lower. We know how to handle it. If it changes, if it mutates, what? That that could, in fact, be a sign of game and function. So these are questions we might want to know now in advance of it hitting our shores. Yeah. Was anybody manipulating this, working on this in some sort of a... Why is it showing up in Congo, by the way? Um, an area that is completely destabilized and absolutely would require the benefits of the United Nations or the WHO or other people going in and locking it down. What is Congo rich in, by the way? All kinds of minerals, all kinds cobalt. of minerals, cobalt, uh, just to name a few that's in all of our cell phones. Right. Yes. So it's amazing when where these things kind of pop up in countries that need stabilizing. Right. Interesting. Just think about that. Anyway, a few days ago, the, the World Health Organization issued this warning. In light of the spread of MPOX outside DRC and the potential for further international spread within and outside Africa, I have decided to convene an emergency committee under the international health regulations to advise me on whether the outbreak represents a public health emergency of international concern. The committee will meet as soon as possible and will be, will be made up of independent experts from a range of relevant disciplines from around the world. Oh, good. Thank you. Ted is there Ross, any a day that I mean, that, that, that guy thinks is not an emergency or is just every day? Like every day he wakes up and he's like, and it's an emergency. And it's our job here on this show to tell you it's not an emergency. And don't let them tell you that it's an emergency. And don't let them put, try to force you into lockdowns and masks and, va and forced vaccines. Tell them, Give them the big middle finger and tell you, no, I'm going to go live my life. I'm going to go to the grocery store. I'm going to go pick my kids up from school. Screw you, Ted Ross. Well, the problem is, is that his emergencies are the threat of emergencies. So we can never actually know, So, which means we don't listen to him at all, because it's only a potential emergency that he classifies as an emergency, which by definition is not. Well, it's like crying wolf, right? I mean, it's how right. many times are you going to tell us this? Yeah. And you, you, you're, you're, uh, by the way, your, your rollout, your initial rollout of this, of course, was considered a dummy run. They've called it this publicly. COVID was a dummy run for what you plan to do. So pandemic 2.0, whether it's hitting now, if this is if this is your pandemic 2.0, your plan, we don't know. But you've already cried wolf one time. We don't, you know, a lot of people fell for it, but mm -hmm. a lot of people said never again. Right. So COVID is sweeping the country again.
simultaneously with this mpox they're calling it mpox now that's what the kids are calling it they can't call it monkey pox because that would apparently was racist i mean that's literally the justification for not calling it monkey pox like racist against monkeys I, okay anyway we don't want to offend the monkeys so anyway now what happens when covid combines itself with monkey pox well that's happening an italian man is believed believed to be the first patient diagnosed with monkeypox, COVID-19, and HIV all at the same time. Previously, it was not believed that monkeypox and COVID infections could happen simultaneously, but the man tested positive for COVID last month after returning from a trip to Spain. Well, he then went to a hospital seeking treatment for a rash, which turned out to be monkeypox. He was treated for both of those viruses and sent home to isolate. He was also placed on a combination antiretroviral therapy that he will need to take for life because of the HIV. Hello, I'm Mark Brown. Get more. Okay, so yeah, Sounds so like a hell what of a, a combination. <laughs> yeah, I know, man. <laughs> What kind of fun is he was he having? Yeah. He got AIDS, monkeypox, and COVID. Was it AIDS? Yeah, he got AIDS. Oh, okay. As well as monkeypox and COVID. And combined now. Now I guess so you can get that combined. Um that's unbelievable. Anyway, meanwhile, if you if you live in the increasingly scary place called the European Union, get ready because starting in September, you'll be asked to start carrying a European vaccination card. Now, this was first reported about two weeks ago, but now we have a date when this is going to be rolled out, which is in September, and it will prove your vaccine status in time for pandemic 2.0. So again, this was reported um, in uh, just about a little over two weeks ago. European vaccination card will be piloted in five countries. Um, specifically, it'll start though in Portugal. So Latvia, Greece, Belgium, Germany, and Portugal. Um, and how it will spark, you know, have a surge of innovation, they're saying. Despite decades of awareness, those transmitted from animals to humans, those zoonotic diseases, continue to pose a significant threat to global health. In the face of this unprecedented COVID-19 crisis, our global lack of preparedness for such outbreaks became starkly apparent. And that way, you'll make sure that you have this new card that will bring crisis under control. Yes, you want to you want to travel? Show us your vaccine card. You want to enter a shopping center? Show us your brand new European Union vaccine card. And don't worry, it'll be digital as well. So all you need to do is scan it to enter your, your movie theater, your grocery store, uh, your bus terminal, your train station. This card is being rolled out, as I mentioned, in Portugal, where the people are very compliant. It's a small country of about 11 million people. And when the government tells the Portuguese people to do something, um, I know this is a gross generalization, but we saw it in action. And absolutely, the, the people in Portugal, when the government tells them to do something, they snap right to it. And that's exactly what happened. Portugal became the highest COVID-19 vaccination rate in the world. They were sending out text messages, reminding all of the Portuguese people, go get text, uh, go get your vaccines. And when they rolled it out for children, make sure you go get your children vaccinated, all of that. And then, of course, not surprisingly, well, just in January of this year, Portugal registers the highest level of excess deaths in Europe. I'm sure it's totally unrelated Totally unrelated to Portugal being the highest COVID-19 vaccination rate in the world. I'm sure it has nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with that similarity at all. Now, according to Vaccines Today, as Europe transitions from emergency measures to long-term COVID-19 management, this is a critical opportunity to strengthen resilience and increase preparedness for future health threats, they write. The European Vaccination Beyond the EUVABECO project, this is what this project is, to get this, to, get, yeah, to get this vaccine card out there. This new project seeks to leverage this momentum by initiating pilot projects to develop and test implementation plans for tools that support both routine and crisis vaccination practices. And they give an example here of how they're going to roll out this new vaccine card. Consider the example of Anna, a 27-year-old nurse who recently moved from uh, Brumaria to Moravania and her family. And in her new country, Anna needs to provide her vaccine history to comply with local regulations. Well, now, using the European vaccine card, Anna can seamlessly transfer her records. She goes online, creates an EVC account, with a provider of her choice, enters her vaccine data from Brumaria. Anna also needs to create one for her son, Lucas, so she sets up a card for him. Transferring information from his paper child health book, both EVCs are then validated by her doctor, authorized by a health professional, 
and the digital record becomes accessible via her smartphone, simplifying the process of sharing it with healthcare providers. Now, of course, we warned you that this was coming. We warned you that this was coming, of course, when they did the rollout of the of the DIA app in Ukraine as a test bed for making sure that you have all of this information digitized and the government would control all of that. Uh, China, of course, we know that this is the case in China. So you can see the controlling of movements of individuals who don't have vaccines, who are then under lockdown, being tell, told to stay in their particular apartments. Um, this is, yes, this is exactly what is happening in the European Union. This is communism. This is exactly what this is. Which is funny because when you think of innovation in Portugal, there's a lot of things that in Portugal you cannot have. Like you can't order your Starbucks on an app. They just don't have that technology yet. You can get an app and scan for benefits. But things like that where it's just America is so far ahead in terms of the technology of living standards. But they could scan you into a restaurant. So somehow that technology was magically accessible. It's not available to, your, to you as a consumer. But if the European Union wants to track you, somehow they are very advanced. That's funny, isn't it? Yeah. Don't you think that's funny? It is, yeah. In this particular area where they want to control you, yeah, it's incredibly they advanced. they have the technology, but think of all the technology we didn't have access to when we were living as residents in Portugal. Yeah. We're like, wow, this is really backwards. It's too bad we don't get a text message from the utility company when they're coming. Or things that we enjoy in America on a regular basis we just didn't have access to. But somehow, Portugal is so advanced when it comes to tracking you. Uh, Paul Wilson in our Rumble chat says, Portugal and Greece, but not Spain, France, or Italy? Am I the only one that failed geography? Yeah, well, no, because they're going to roll this out just in these particular countries to test it. My bet in my, look, this is me being cynical, but because again, the Portuguese are so compliant with the government, um, you know, when the government tells a lot, you know, they, they snap right to it. They get tech, they absolutely go and do exactly what the government tells them to do. So I think that that's why they're probably rolling it out in a much smaller country uh, like Portugal to start. So who is behind this all? might be asking yourselves. Well, it turns out the WHO is primarily behind this and funded, of course, by Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, um, according to the Portugal uh, resident website. Developed during the COVID-19 pandemic for the EU Digital COVID Certificate, the GDHCN is now managed by the World Health Organization, enabling the authenticity of digital vaccination records to be insured. But not everyone's on board with this. Like myself, I'm not on board with this. David Bell uh, and also Catherine Austin Fitz. Catherine uh, Austin Fitz, the founder and publisher of the Solari Report, says this. Uh, she's a former assistant secretary of housing and Ur Ur urban development, said plans uh, for the EVC represent another step towards asserting control of labor and travel with a goal to controlling resources and assets. The goal is financial control, she says. There's no legitimate public health purpose. She said the central bank bankers are hiding behind a health narrative. Policies like lockdown are a key way to manage inflation and resource demand when monetary policy uh, is uh, highly inflationary. Um, also, David Bell. David Bell, a public health physician, biotech consultant, former director of global health technologies and intellectual global ventures, says the proposed vaccination card reflects an increasing effort to utilize public health tools as a means to concentrate wealth and provide a means to control populations. It's very reminiscent, he says, of approaches in parts of Europe pre-World War II and essentially serves a similar purpose to exclude individuals who do not follow government instructions from society. He says the trial in Europe is an obvious next step after the recent widening of surveillance under the IHR, with, which greatly increases the likelihood of recurrent lockdowns to enable mandated vaccination as a way to force mass use and profit making from vaccines, he writes. So let me just flip this page here. Sorry. Page 10. Okay. Sorry. We lost Philip, so I need to go to. Uh, yeah, I've, I've lost control of the. I'm working on it in the okay. background. Image. Next image and take image. How do I take it? Um, next image. There we go. How do I take that? Take it. Cut. Cut. Where is cut? Oh, it's way down there. Okay, there we go. Um, okay, the latest version. So here we take a look at this. The latest version of New Zealand's pandemic plan, which serves as a blueprint for the rest of the world to follow, includes provisions to allow law enforcement and even NATO to enforce the government's mandatory vaccination agenda. Oh, interesting. 
So, and here's the updated plan. The updated plan from Ethan Huff, who writes over at, uh, uh, um, over at Natural News, three special powers that are allowed during a threat. The power to detain, isolate, quarantine persons, places, buildings, ships, vehicles, aircraft, and animals. So they have the power to do all of that. Isolate, quarantine persons, places, buildings, ships, vehicles, aircraft, and your dog. Number two, the power to prescribe preventative treatment like pharmaceutical drugs or vaccines to people. Those who refuse will fall into the first special power category. And what th- does wait? What does that mean? Special power, like they have a special power to control you if you refuse. Yes, it's exactly. It's forced forced vaccination. I'm going to tell you, I don't like that. Well, New Zealand, don't move to New Zealand if you don't want this. This is where they're rolling it out. The power to allow police forces to do, quote, anything reasonably necessary, including the use of force to help a medical officer or health or any person authorized by the medical officer of health in the exercise of performance of powers of functions under Section 70 or 71. In other words, NATO forces, UN forces, military forces, Hold you down, force vaccinations on a population of people. But it calls that reasonably necessary. Yes. It's reasonable. As part of their NATO forcing the world to get vaccinated plan uh, in New Zealand. Because they are still forcing this narrative that people who didn't get vaccinated were a harm to other people. We've seen that recently uh, from Dr. Peter Hotez. We saw that, in in fact, in the newsletter on Monday, we talked about a story about how the health, the airline industry is saying we're safer than ever, but we can't account for how many deaths were caused by people who traveled during the pandemic pandemic, contracted COVID, and then died from that. They cannot prove that. And in fact, we know that COVID deaths are overreported. But what they're saying is that contraction of COVID was still responsible for the pandemic deaths, which again, we cannot prove. And so they're still pushing this on us that the lack of vaccination is what Uh, caused pandemic deaths, even though the data does not support that. And we've looked for it. We've looked high and low under every nook and cranny, and it's just not there. Yeah, it's really disturbing. So there we are. There's your pandemic 2.0. Get ready for monkeypox. Get ready for vaccination cards. Um, And it's going to be interesting to see what... uh, And they will tell you, and the way that they'll get all these compliant countries to fall in line, like Belgium, uh, Latvia, Portugal, is you won't be able to travel. You won't be able to go into public transportation, go shopping, et cetera, until you have your vaccine passport, your vaccine digital ID set up and ready to go. Mm-hmm. You, and By the way, as we roll out a new round of monkey pox or whatever the hell else, you're going to have to have that vaccine updated in yeah. order to attend this event, this sporting event, or go to this concert. Which is interesting because a court in Portugal, we covered this recently, has already ruled that a a COVID diagnosis or a COVID test was not a reasonable way to restrict freedom. So how are they going to take that when a court has already ruled that that was an unreasonable restriction of liberties? So we'll see if this even plays out. It's it's interesting to note now we're not here to push back at uh, or, you know, impugn Portuguese people, but the Portuguese did not sue. They did not have litigation. It was German travelers in Portugal that pushed back. So absolutely, there is a culture of compliance there that was a cause for concern, especially when we were residents in Portugal. Yeah, I see someone in the chat, Calvin, saying, I remember a story, weren't you guys covering it, where NATO was training uh, immigrant armies? Yes, they are. We covered that right here on the show. It's like when, when the people of a country won't do the bidding of NATO, you need mm-hmm. an army. You need yeah. like you need military age men. Um, NATO absolutely doing that. And so is the United Nations. They'll need military age men who are compliant, whether they've come from Africa or other countries who are going to be marshaled and pushed out in order right. to to do this. Again, I know I make this comparison all the time, but this is straight out of the Hunger Games. This is yeah. what the peacekeepers do. Uh, so if you haven't already read the Hunger Games, it's time you read the Hunger Games and see that we are in this dystopic hell.